Hi everybody, this is Andreas Nest here, business coach. So today we are in Sausi, which is part of the seaside area of Portsmouth, um, also called South Sea Village. And we are talking to Mick Collins, who is a chocolatier, making beautiful chocolates down here. So I wanted to learn about why he went into making chocolates, where it comes from and, and how it all started. So thanks for seeing me, Mick. My Much pleasure, appreciated. Andreas. So, Thank you. just to understand a little bit more about your journey. When I joined the Navy at 16. Um, my, um, my dad didn't want me to join the Navy, so he wouldn't let me. So I forged his signature on all the papers. And you did? I was about, th I think I was three months in the Navy before he realised I wasn't in the house anymore. <laughs> um, by which time I was in Hong Kong, it was too late. So, when I joined the ship, I was 16. I looked about seven. And um, I slid down the ladder of my first ship, HMS Antrim, big destroyer. And uh, I landed on the deck <coughs> and I looked around me and there was um, a big crescent of horrible old, gnarled old sailors all drinking rum, tattooed from head to toe, chewing tobacco and smoking pipes and this was just the women, this was. <laughs> and I just, I just hadn't seen anything like this collection of people eyeing me suspiciously and I just thought I've got to do something and do something quick to get to get in with them. So I went and saw the cooks in the galley and I said to them, can I make some chocolates? You know, I make rum truffles in particular mm -hmm. and can I make them? And they said, well, yeah, you can use the galley as long as you give us some rum truffles. So I started making these Navy rum truffles mm -hmm. and they loved them. I mean, they loved the rum. Yeah. I'm not sure whether they like the chocolate, but they loved the rum. Yeah. Um, and within about two weeks, I was sort of illicitly supplying the whole ship, including the captain with these <laughs> Navy rum truffles. <laughs> so that's really how that started. Then I had my career in London. Mm. I left the Navy, went up to London, had my career, then I came back down and worked for the Navy again. And the, um, the contracts with the Navy for what we were, civilian investigators, was coming to an end because um, the troops were coming back from Afghanistan and yeah. Iraq and Germany. Yeah. And so they were quite rightly getting their jobs back and the civilians were being released because they were additional cost. Yeah. So they turned around to us and said, you got a year to, in effect, the contracts were finished, find another job. <clears throat> so I started thinking, you know, I'd done investigation for 30 years and I'd had enough of it really. Mm -hmm. And I started thinking about the truffles being in Portsmouth, Navy yeah. rum truffles. And I thought, you know, why not try something? You've got mm -hmm. an opportunity now. The sacks made me, you know, do something that I wasn't brave enough to do without yeah. getting the sack. So I started to make them again, take them into the lads at work, mm -hmm. <clears throat> dish them out and see their response. And they were a bit rough and rugged at first and then they got a bit better over the yeah. year. During that year, I did three or four mm. professional chocolatier courses, and each one I did, I got more and more interested in. Yeah. So basically, then um, came the end of the year's contract, and I set up in a cupboard in Albert Road in South Sea and hairdressers. Wow. Was your, so that was your first chocolate manufacturing <laughs> yeah. workshop? Yeah. It wasn't ideal. Uh, Choc hair and chocolate don't go very well together. It's no. a bit of a niche market. <laughs> Even though environmental health were happy with it, because it was sealed off, yeah, but yeah. it wasn't ideal. I couldn't get any customers in. And it was boiling hot because of all the hair dryers downstairs. Yeah. It was boiling hot, even in March. And I realised, really, as soon as I moved in, yeah. I realised I'd made a massive mistake. Yeah. So then I was driving from a business meeting through a suburb of Portsmouth, mm -hmm. and there was an empty shop. Yeah. I was stuck in traffic. I looked around, saw this empty shop. Mm -hmm. It was so rotten that the toilet sign was lying across the pavement where it had ripped the wooden fascia Jesus. out. And I just had that sort of light bulb moment where I thought, well, you know, what if... There's enough room to get, you know, a number of customers in, and yeah. those customers, um, in effect, pay for me to have a free kitchen. That was the yeah, thinking. Yeah. As it happens, the reality of business is it's been the other way around. It's yeah. the chocolates that have always subsidised the cafe. All right. So for three weeks, I opened the door. Day one, no one came in. <laughs> no one came in for three weeks. Nobody knew we were there. What we did. Yeah. Then a lady came in eventually and tried to buy the sofas because she thought it was an antique shop. <laughs> so it was all going wrong. And then eventually against my better judgment I put a note in the window saying takeaway sandwiches available. Right. My first customer was a 94 year old lady on a Zimmer frame and she came in and she she said you do cheese and pickle? I said yep cheese and pickle so I did a cheese and pickle sandwich <laughs> and she looked around and saw the chocolates yeah. and she bought a 30 pound tin of chocolates Jesus. and went out and I thought that's when I thought perhaps everything goes hand in hand perhaps for whatever reason yeah. 
somebody comes over the threshold, yeah. they're then exposed to the chocolates. So and once you've got them in the shop, then yeah. they see you aware and then they get interested. Yeah. So <coughs> gradually word got round and you know we, we, went, we were taking 30, 40 pounds a day at first. Yeah. And it took a long time to get to turning over 100 pound a day, yeah. then 200, then yeah. 300. How well, long were we talking about? A year, two years, three years? I should think before we regularly were breaking even, and which was three hundred pounds for mm. us, I would think it probably took two and a half years. Two and a half years to get to that point. Yeah, and it didn't seem to matter what we did. You know, people say, "Have you tried this and have you tried that?" From a marketing point mm. of view, well, we we dished out thousands and thousands and thousands of flyers. Mm. Well, the Lord Mayor came along, the local MP came yeah. along. You know, we had big parties and live yeah. music we did everything we could possibly yeah. do we had the girls out walking around the streets with billboards flashing billboards yeah. on dishing out free chocolates we couldn't really have done any more we paid for a lot of advertising and i do have some fans who literally stand up thankfully at some business network meetings and say you know i don't even like chocolate but i'll eat mix yeah, yeah. because they're used their, their view of chocolate is the cadbury's machined yeah, yeah, yeah. milkshake on a stick yeah, and not yeah. rich filling pure chocolate yeah, yeah absolutely you know the, we, the only uh, i think probably in the thousands and thousands and thousands that we sold over years and years and years maybe three people have said they don't like our chocolate because it's too bitter mm -hmm. but it's not bitter mm -hmm. but it's not sweet yeah. it's not overloaded with sugar yeah. unusually for a chocolatier I'm, I'm a real enemy of sugar yeah anything i can do to replace sugar i use yeah, yeah. so our um, orange natural not just orange all yeah, flavors yeah. Are, are natural oils yeah. and they're naturally sweet in themselves and okay. then, then you don't need the sugars so when you so after three years more or less your your chocolate shop wizard cafe was working for you yeah yeah okay. I think so yeah you know people would would come in for any reason we started to have a lot of exclusive parties there yeah. which went very well okay I mean, so and, and what was next from that then <coughs> well once we broke even um, I then started to, th I hoped really that, I, I, I think I was um, on a sort of plateau, mm -hmm. I'd got to a stage where we're breaking even and I just couldn't seem to do any more, yeah. I never seemed to have time to get out and market the chocolates properly because there yeah. was always a problem at the shop. And you were the main maker? Yeah, well, yeah, I was the only maker. The only yeah. maker. I, tr I tried um, unsuccessfully really, I thought Location, location, location. We were in a small suburb of Kopna. We'd done as well as we mm -hmm. could. I really thought we couldn't do any better where we were. Yeah. Nothing would have made a difference. Changing. I was totally convinced it was the location that was holding us back mm -hmm. at the previous place. Yeah, yeah. And I probably didn't do as much due diligence as I should have done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we moved to South Sea. <clears throat> the first thing that went wrong was the staffing, really, because mm. staff didn't want to travel, yeah. didn't want to come. I had staff for two years at the old place. They didn't want to come four miles down the road to South Sea. So you come to a hugely competitive area where the costs are far greater, yeah. and you have to up your game. Mm. And initially, when we opened, we fell short of that. You know, hundreds of people poured in. We didn't have the staff that were up to dealing yeah. with it. We didn't have the processes in place. We didn't have any tr any real mm. training in place, so it led to this huge influx of people who didn't come back. And I because of the all the other aspects of running the business here, it took my eye off really the main focus of the business and the reason the business started in the first place. It doesn't seem possible that you could forget your main part of the business, but it can get overlooked in amongst the daily chaos of everything else you've got to deal with and so I started to focus less on the chocolates which is probably the only without being conceited the only exceptional aspect of the business you know we do a good coffee yeah, yeah. but if you go down the road there's a coffee company who got 15 different blends and different grinders yeah. and all and they really know about coffee yeah. we do a good coffee but they they're the coffee experts well, the specialists yeah and it's the same you know we we were I was dipping my toes into areas that I was an expert in. Mm -hmm. So the bar side of it, we do a good party, yeah. but when we open as a bar every night, the Friday before Christmas, you know, we ended up with four customers, whereas right. every other bar around here was, you was could barely hammered. get in. Yeah. So we haven't been able to compete 
in the other areas because we haven't got the experience or expertise in it. Yeah, yeah. So it's a bit so of a vicious circle. So have you, have you found your identity now of where you're actually really good at? I mean, obviously chocolate making. Yeah, I, can, <coughs> I, need, I needed to find something which would allow me to refocus on the chocolates mm -hmm. and to make and market and sell chocolates. And even over the last fortnight since so that's dawned on me that, mm -hmm. you know, somebody came out with a good comment in business. They said, when we were at the previous place, mm. we were a chocolate shop yeah. where you could get a coffee. Yeah. They said, this place looks more like a coffee shop where you can buy a chocolate. Yeah. So yeah. that shift in emphasis. Yeah. Yeah. And, I, and, I, and that really has hit the nail on the head. Yeah. 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 You know, when you walk, if you look in from the street, it looks like probably a nice, unique, quite classy ch coffee shop. Yeah. And then you see the chocolates. So you don't instantly know the chocolates are made on the premises yeah. for a start, which is a vital selling point. Absolutely. You know, um, we can talk to people about individual requirements and yeah. bespoke chocolates. And we do things with chocolate that almost nobody else does. You yeah. know, we brand them with corporate images yeah. and things <laughs> like that. I think, you know, it, passion is a, is, 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 is a, is a fantastic emotion but passion can blind you sometimes mm -hmm. to the facts of business yeah. and life, I expect. Mm. You know, I'm very passionate about my chocolate, um, but you can't let passion, just passion, dictate the way business yeah. goes. You know, I've got a, a great mate who's a very gruff builder in Portsmouth, yeah. and he said to me once, he said, you know, so what have you achieved then? You know, this is before we moved. He said, what have you achieved? I said, well, you know, we came third in the Cafe of the Year competition, yeah. We won the Shape in Portsmouth uh, New Business and Enterprise yeah. um, for 2017. Yeah. Um, we won a couple of other awards, and, all, and I was singing my own praises because he'd asked me to. Yeah. And then at the end of the day, he said to me, "Yeah, he said, but Mick, he said, it's not hard cash, is it? It's not hard cash. So, so, so amongst all those awards that you've won, yeah, what do you think is really your biggest achievement?" I think my biggest achievement is supplying Rolls Royce because you know when I was in my hairy cupboard in yeah. South Sea, you know, you four, would have never th three, three and a half years ago, I'd never believed in a million years that you know Rolls Royce would have sacked a very very prestigious chocolate company to use our chocolates. I'm yeah, very yeah. proud of that fact. Um, I also made chocolates for a member of the royal family last year, but because it's not royal appointment, I'm not allowed to start. Putting it on <laughs> Facebook and telling, yeah. I can tell people. You can tell people, but, but you can't write um, it down. Yeah, it's her person. I was told it was her, from the palace. It was her personal preference. Oh well, but not royal appointment. Well, that's so, quite an achievement then. But it's still wonderful. Yeah, yeah. you know, I, I, I almost had to pinch myself. You know, when when the customer turned around and said who they were for, I wasn't entirely convinced. I thought it was one of my old sailor buddies winding me up, and then he showed me this crest, this royal yeah. crest. And then he wandered across the road and got in a sort of bulletproof Jaguar. Yeah, yeah. And I started to think, well, maybe mm. it's for real. For all the other fellow business owners out there, what do you think was your biggest learning? Be careful, I think, of premises and staff. They're often essential as part of growing a business, but be very careful how you do it. You know, don't take a quantum leap like perhaps I did. Mm -hmm. Take that next step. Yeah. Never, ever stop spreading the word. Yeah. You know, my um, business meetings and, and things like that that I go to, there's a direct correlation with how many chocolates we sell um, related to how many times I get out. Yeah. Um, as I say, I've suffered through a lack of experience in some of the other areas, so hopefully the partnership will give us expertise in the areas yeah. we've fallen short in. Yeah, yeah. So all I can really say to that is, you know, watch this space. We have... Uh, quite a lot of themed events that will yeah. start to, you know, gin nights, rum nights, chocolate indulgence nights. We're very um, accomplished, I would say, now in the party side of it, exclusive parties. We have yeah. a lot of parties we can cater for probably up to 70 people, um, all sorts of food. So that side's gone well. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> really, it's a case of sitting down with the new people coming in to help us, and we'll go through the sort of... Um, events that we're going to plan yeah yeah absolutely well great mick it's been smashing talking to you thank you Andrew. thank you, Andrew. Very thank much. you for your yeah. time yeah thank you and for you fellow business owners make sure that you take some of mick's advice on board and don't rush into decisions always test and measure everything you do and um, i will see you next time thank you bye bye